Hello, welcome to Workable Miniatures. I'm Jim, and tonight we're going to be painting a 3D printed priestess. You can find it at myminifactory.com as well as other places on the internet for free. I'm not sure who made it, but thank you for your time. There's a lot of people who are claiming they made it. Let's get started. This miniature was first primed with Vallejo Matte Black Primer before applying a very dark blue. I like running golden high flow acrylics through my airbrush as it's already very thin and requires little in the way of additional thinners. Since a primary light source will be from two places on the ground, I spray my highlights from below. I also spray the two places the light will be emanating from to help gauge where these later highlights will go. With the airbrush work completed, I head to my desk and start glazing on flesh tones, covering most of the upwards facing flesh, but leaving some of the indigo to act as shadows. I apply this glaze over four to five coats, covering slightly less with each coat. The downward facing parts of the flesh, such as under the arms, are left untouched. For the second highlight color, I repeat the same as before, covering slightly less with each glaze, until I've built up another four to five coats. I try to be cognizant of where the upper highlights would be placed if a weak neutral light shone from above. Since this is a small miniature and would mostly be viewed from above, I didn't want the entirety of the upper body swallowed in shadow. I decided to use coppery metallics for the bells and discs on her belt. My original thought was of her being a druid, and whenever she stalked someone, darkness would follow, giving way only to the cold light of the glowing fungi that would sprout at her feet and crumbled ash in her wake. The end idea was, when the party finally got to see her in regular light, the warm colors of her flesh and clothing would be in jarring contrast to what they had seen previously. In a story setting, that's fine and all, but in practice on a lifeless model, I think silver metallics would have been better, considering the knives will be painted with silver metallics later. Ultimately, the coppers end up being too close to the hue of her flesh and the leather belt, making it hard to differentiate between them. The skull was painted in much the same fashion as the flesh, four to five layers of glazes covering slightly less surface area each time. The final highlights were done with thicker paint as they were applied more like edge highlights. I didn't use a vibrant white for the final highlight as I felt it would upset the lingering darkness that was following her. When I paint the knives silver, I leave much of the blue. It was about here in the painting process that I started to really build her story. There was a small village with many retired aristocrats from the neighboring townships. Their mask of piety and etiquette belied their true nature and how they came to power, these unscrupulous creatures of opportunity. The final sins of eight of these cowardly predators occurred last harvest season when they fell upon a wild woman in the bordering swamp. They brutalized her before hiding their transgressions by binding her in a large fish trap and casting her into the water. They only waited long enough for the bubbles to stop surfacing before returning to their homes, their wives, their children, and most importantly to them, their facade of impeccable decency. The hair was kind of weird, spiky, which is fine for around the head, but doesn't make a lot of sense when you get to the lower back. It's more like quills than hair, so this too influenced the character's story. Originally, she was supposed to survive the drowning. The skull just meant to strike fear into the men. The story evolved to it being her mother as the druid, and through divination, she finds her daughter's body and suffers visions of the horrors that were committed. She fashions her daughter's skull into a mask so that her daughter may watch with her as her vengeance is enacted. A wig made from the reeds reeking of the stagnant swamp adorn her head. In retrospect, I wish I used a lighter cream color for the reed wig. Maybe something like dried wheat, but then again, the upper body is made up of brown and coppers already, 
So avoiding a fourth brownish hue probably wasn't a mistake after all. I then void shield blue down to a glaze and apply it as a highlight on the lower body and bottom of the upper limbs. This step took the longest in this project since more than half the miniature is covered in blue. Thinning a dark blue to a glaze, I apply this over everything except the skull to tone everything down a step and to help tie everything together. I felt the hair and flesh were a little too bright, especially. To create the fungi caps that would serve as a light source, I placed drops of hot glue on glass and let them dry. For the stalks, I add lines of hot glue that vary in thickness into water. Putting the glue directly into water allows it to maintain a mostly cylindrical shape and avoid a completely flat side. Just be careful not to put the tip of the gun into the water. I then shape the caps and cut the stalks with an X-Acto knife. I dabbed some white paint in the middle of the bottom of the caps, then added a vibrant blue around the edges, again only on the bottom of the caps. I then glue the mushrooms into place. The mushrooms had a decent glowing look to them, gently helped by the paint under the caps, but I wanted a more ethereal ambience, so I thinned the fluorescent blue I used in the airbrush steps with glaze medium and glazed it over the caps, leaving the stalks alone. Just one light coat made a big difference. With the light sources now in place, I go back one last time with Void Shield Blue, slightly thinned, and layer on some brighter highlights all over the blue areas, especially near the mushroom caps. The priestess is now ready to visit her vengeance upon those who wronged her daughter. Now I just need to fabricate a storyboard so the party thinks the aristocrats are the good guys and the evil swamp witch is randomly killing them for no reason. I'll need to make some clues that lead them to the ultimate truth and... Damn it. Like, painting a miniature isn't time-consuming enough. This is the final result. I made some mistakes along the way, the worst being the placement of highlights, especially on the sides. I'll need to come back with some lighter blues and apply more glazing to improve the transitions. The mild glazing over the hot glue did a great job of lending a glowing effect, even in the dimmer light. Just gonna wrap it up for today. I hope you learned something or were inspired to start or expand your own collection. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them below. And if you like the content of this video and would like to see more, please like, share, and subscribe. I'm Jim with Working With Miniatures. I'm truly grateful for your time and I bid you a fond farewell. Till the next video.